Okay, these are my homemade Goss meters. I got them off K&J Magnetic site. I'm gonna put that up here uh, somewhere in this video, either after this or towards the end. All I used to, to house the components was an old house self or a house phone, you know, the kind you'd set on the receiver and it would charge. You just pick it up, a wireless phone. I stripped the guts out and this is the back off of it. And I just soldered my own board here inside and the K&J Magnetics website shows you how to solder the resistors. And these are your connections to your voltmeter and then it comes out here, and here on the end is just a hall sensor, if you can see it. I've got this one bent where the end is flat towards you. And this one, this particular uh, model I built, has a USB for 5 volts. It works right out of a computer USB. It just takes the voltage right into there, because you just use the hot wire. And I'll show you how to do that on, on their site. But that's what I use to house mine so I can, you know, keep them together and have everything together without having wires and problems shorting out or what have you. And this other one I used on some demonstrations that you've seen. I used a Samsung phone adapter that's or phone charger and it's five volts. So it works just as well as the USB on the other one. That's what you power them with. And off eBay, I bought these or hull sensors. You can see them. I got four or five in here. And I don't remember who I bought them from. And the K&J site, you'll see, it tells you what style of hull sensor to get. I've got several here left over, which I may use them for something else. And I'll show you in another video how this particular style of sensor, or it might be this, the, the wiring diagram of the resistors in there, that these work one way through them, they work one, uh, with one type of reading, and the other way, it's a different reading. But it's the same either way, and I'll show you that later. But you have to have resistors, and here's a 47K, 47,000 ohm resistors. I got them, that's, that's the, the least I could buy was this package of them, I only used one. And one of, some of these one of these resistors, you'll use two of them. This is a 10,000 ohm. So you have 47,000, 10,000, and a 1,000 ohm, and then a 330 ohm. I think you use two of the 330s to build the board that's inside these Gauss meters. So anyway, that's what I use. It's a homemade Gauss meter that you can build off K&J Magnetic site. And I'll put that up, like I said. But they work pretty cool. They work pretty good. You just plug them into your voltmeter. Red positive. Your black to negative. Like so. And you put it on 20 volts. And then as you bring a magnet close to or far away from the hall sensor on either side, you'll get a reading. One side will show a positive reading. The other side will show a negative but depending on which side you're on, even positive or negative, which way you turn the magnet, your reading might be different going through it one way as it does the other. And that kind of led me to another understanding of my theory. But I'll show you how this works in this next clip. This is just how I set mine up in uh, old house phones, you know. The chargeable type that were wireless. I just stripped the guts out of them, hooked my two banana plugs here off the board which is soldered on this resistors are soldered on this board and my wires come out to my hall sensor through the end of the phone and then the board soldered to these uh, banana plugs my power is brought in soldered to the board I put the back on and that way it's pretty handy you can use it like this so you can move it around and it's it's not gonna have any problems anyway that's the USB plug you can use right out of a computer to power it or I like this one which is a, a phone charger five volts it's just five volts is what you need five DC volts to make it work so anyway that's how I made mine and they work great and that's what you need to make them a hole sensor and these resistors and I'll put the K&J Magnetics website up so you can see what you need if you ever want to build one of these 
and I'll move on to showing you how it works. I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I've got my meter plugged in here to a cord, if you can see it. Just plugged in five volts going into it. And I've got it set on this line here to zero. And this board here is marked one inch, two inch, three inches, and four inches away from the meter. And I want to show you how this works. Let me move the voltmeter in a little closer. And let's take the one inch Neo, the blue side of all the magnets. If you see this, the blue is south, blue is south, blue is south, the blue is south, and the red is north. Red is north, you can see the light coming on. Red is north, red is north. So they're all the same, the colors are correct. Blue is south, red is north on all four of them. I got a one inch, three quarter, half inch, and one quarter inch N42 neodymium sphere magnets. But watch, when I get right up close to the meter, it's 2.05, which is, as I showed before, it's thousands, hundreds, and tens. So it's 2,000, 2,050 Gauss. And that's what the, the one inch, right up against it. But watch the distance. If I come away and the numbers drop, they drop one, and I get out here a little ways and it'll go to zero. You see, I'm a good ways from the board. And let me do the three quarter. And it's in 42, so right up against it, 2,050 Gauss. So they're the same at, at ground zero. But as I come away, naturally, since this one's smaller, I lose my reading at about there, right at four inches, a little over four inches. The half inch, which will show 2,050 Gauss up at ground zero, as I come back with it, I lose power at about three inches. And I have a quarter inch here, a little bitty quarter inch, and it'll also show 2,050 Gauss at ground zero. And as I move back, I get back at about, not quite, well, a little over two inches. A little over two, two and a half inches. So they're the same at ground zero, which the meter's working from K and J Magnetics, the way I showed you. It works real good. Uh, as far as I can tell. I think the problem I had, and I'm going to show you in my video that you'll see another video about how I've discovered magnetism, the north side diversion. The north side diversion of the static charge happens away from the magnet, not right at the, the mass. But anyway, this is what showed me that that's how that works. Because if I put the north side to this, it shows 2,120 Gauss on this side. See that? The north on the right shows 2,120. The south on this side shows 2,050. But if I put the north on that side, it's 2,050. And if I put the south on that side, it's 2,120. So it depends on which way the magnet or the hall sensor is reading, I may be a little off there, is reading the magnetic power. And that's what showed me how the magnet actually works. I'm a little wrong on my theory, but I'm, I'm correct on my theory. I'm just wrong at where this diversion on the north side happens. It doesn't happen at the magnet. It happens the same distance from uh, the magnet that the acceleration's happening on the south side, the distance here. Let me use a smaller one to show you what I mean. The distance, you know, right up close here, we're getting 2,050. But if I come out here, Right about two and a half inches. That's the distance that this little bitty quarter inch magnet has a magnetic field. Two and a half inches away from the sensor. The north side is the same. But it'll be 2,120 because it's pushing through the meter instead of pulling into it because I flipped the magnet. But if you watch, let me turn it right just a moment. If I turn it to where I'm 2,120 again, there it is. If I come back, it goes to zero a little bit less, right at two inches on this side, 2,120, back off, and I lose it about an inch and a half. But the south side, it, let me get it right, at 2,050, remember it's reading the magnet, or the sensor is reading it different, it's going to read it up until 
a little over two inches. And I think that's not that the magnetic power is different. I think it's because the, the hall sensors I bought off eBay are just not perfect. And if you had a $400 Gauss meter, I think the, the, the expensive Gauss meters or a Gauss meter you buy that's made as a Gauss meter only uses one side of the sensor anyway. So they're both going to be the same off that one side. So this, you can use it either way, but it works great. Like I said, at ground zero, they all formulate out the same. You know, 2050 at a one inch sphere, all the way down to the quarter inch, you know. Here, I'll do the half inch. 2000, just a minute, let me get it right. 2050 for the half inch. So it, it works really cool. It works really good. But I did figure out that since my sensor was what was throwing things off on, on which side of which magnet of the pole of the magnet to the side of the sensor showed me an epiphany on how magnetism actually works. Anyway, I wanted to show this to how to build a, an easy to make homemade Gauss meter for magnets. And it works really good off of K&J Magnetics website. And I buy most of my magnets from K&J too. I'm not supported by them i'm not paid by them they just have good shipping quick time of shipping out to you and they got good prices and a, a, a good assortment of magnets neodyniums in 42s and 52s and others i want to mention here that when you when you run the magnet one way on the sensor you'll get a positive reading but if you flip the magnet, you'll get a negative reading. But if you put the magnet on the other side, it reverses. I get negative south on the left in this orientation. If I've got the sensor in this orientation, negative south to the left, negative north to the right. And if I spin the magnet, I get positive south to the right and positive south or north to the left. So it depends on which way this magnetic field or this magnet, which um, what my theory states, it's going through it one way, depends on which way it's going through that sensor, whether it's positive or negative, which way it runs through the current through in, in the red or out the, and out the black or in the black and out the red. That's why you get a positive and negative. But that's, I just wanted to throw that in there. Thanks.